God's grace, his mercy, and his peace be multiplied to you in the precious name of his Son, our Savior, Jesus. Amen. I'd like to share with you some words, especially based upon the gospel lesson from Matthew chapter 18. The entire chapter of Matthew deals with the whole concept of forgiveness, repentance and forgiveness. And again, as human beings, forgiveness is never easy. It's hard. That's a part of the reason God's word encourages us with regard to forgiveness. So that we might be free and so that others might be free as well. I don't know how many of you listen to NPR. Um, I do sometimes. Sometimes my blood pressure goes up when I listen to NPR. And one of the things that they did, they announced uh, this past week, was they were going to have a psychologist talk about forgiveness. And how sometimes it's better not to forgive. And they said, you know, well, just write in and tell us your experience and we may broadcast some of those. And I thought, that psychologist didn't read this gospel lesson for this Sunday. <laughs> Forgiveness and when not to forgive. I remember when I was, before I retired and would do premarital counseling, Oftentimes I'd say to the couple, there are three essential elements in a marriage. Number one is love. And husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. And love is always giving. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But number two is acceptance. Accept your spouse as a gift. God's gift to you for life. Your job is not to change your spouse. Your job is to accept one another as God's gift to one another. And then the third element that I said is absolutely essential is forgiveness. Because there's no such thing as a perfect husband and there's no such thing as a perfect wife. So we have to be generous in our forgiving of one another. In the gospel lesson for today, Peter comes to Jesus and he says, Lord, how often shall I forgive my brother? Seven times? Now at that time, there was a rabbinic ruling, a rabbinic rule that said, you need to forgive people three times and after that, they're done, with, you're done with them. So Peter thought, I'm being more generous than even this rabbinic rule. Seven times, four more than, and Jesus responds to Peter, Peter, not seven times, but 70 times seven. Forgiveness is qualitative, not quantitative. There's power in the words when we say, I forgive you. Because those are God's words. And then Jesus tells a parable. And he says, the kingdom of heaven is like and he tells this parable about the master calling in all of his servants and settling their debts. And the one, the one servant who comes in who owes his master a great deal begs him not to put him in prison and his wife in prison and his children in prison. 
I remember years ago I read a commentary that said the debt that this master forgave in our economy would be over twelve million dollars. Twelve million dollars. And the master forgave the servant. He had pity on him. He forgave him this enormous debt. And when the servant goes out, he meets a fellow servant who owes him a much smaller amount. And the amount that I read a number of years ago was this servant owed his fellow servant $20. The one who had just been forgiven over 12 million threatens and puts in prison the one who owed him $20. We live in and under God's grace. And that grace includes his forgiveness. I'd like you to take home three things this morning from this gospel lesson. Number one, God is rich in forgiveness. He doesn't say, oh, you used up 300, uh, sorry, there's no forgiveness. No. God is rich in forgiveness. And his richness is wondrous. Number two, the blood of Jesus is greater than the power of sin. The blood of Jesus and that sacrifice on the cross is more powerful than sin. And God says, I remove that sin from you as far as the east is from the west, and I remember it no more. We might remember, and Satan might want to remind us, oh, remember what you did, remember what you said, we, you know. He's the accuser of the brethren. But God said, I remember it no more. It is removed from you as far as the east is from the west. And number three, be generous and rich in forgiving others. Maybe it's a spouse. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's one of your children. Maybe it's a co-worker but be rich and generous in your forgiveness as God has been rich and generous to us. In just a few minutes we'll be coming to the altar. We come as people who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. We come as people who wear robes of righteousness not because of anything we have done, but because of everything our God has done for us on that cross. His blood has washed away all of your sins. It was announced to you earlier. Jesus said, whoever sins you forgive, I forgive. Your sins have been washed away. You are cleansed. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So number one, remember that God is rich in forgiveness. Number two, the blood of Jesus is greater than the power of sin. And number three, be generous and rich in forgiving others. In the peace of God which passes all human understanding, stand guard over your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord.